Yeah, there's one option I talked about, I think, at the beginning of the chapter. Yeah, this. I'll enable this now, but I'm not going to leave it enabled, but just so you can see what it's like. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, he'll tell Lily now when to open certain chests nearby. In the Tomb of Ours, you come to a valve of mithril with a keyhole. Did you try the first key? Or the second? Hope you like electrical shocks. <laughs> Hope you realize the scepter from the throne room is the key. Just don't use the wrong end. Otherwise, you'll find yourself back at the entrance, completely naked, <laughs> all of your non-living possessions teleported to the inner crypt as yet more treasure for the demi-lich. Except the scepter, of course. I think Bones will open up with a uh, sneak attack. Yeah, tell that. Uh, Alright. Alright, let's take them down. Negative energy. Somebody got a critical. <laughs> Finally, the treasure room in the Tomb of Horrors. With silvered ceiling, ivory walls inlaid with gold, and polished agate floors. In the center is a granite sarcophagus, whose outer shell has platinum glyphs Spelling a Sararak on the lid in platinum, and it's destroyed at one end to reveal bits of wood, a few bones, destroyed jewelry, torn bits of fabric, dust, a broken staff, and a shattered skull. It couldn't be another false inner crypt, could it? <laughs> There's even three iron chests with literally tens of thousands of gems and coins between them. Though, you wouldn't realize it until you hold the treasure 13 miles from the tomb. At which point, it would reveal itself as relatively worthless. <laughs> Alright, but assuming you didn't fall for the second false inner crypt. Using the first key, you'll finally reach the crypt of Asararach the Demi-Ledge. The 10 by 20 foot burial vault is completely empty, except for a small keyhole in the center of the floor and the Demi-Lich's skull. Did you use the first key? Hope you like explosions. The second? Hope you like floor traps. At least it opened the vault to reveal every nude character's possessions and the Demi-Lich's treasure. But it also caused the dust from his bones to swirl and rise, forming a man-like shape. I hope you didn't cast any spells against it. <laughs> It'll eventually become empowered enough to retaliate like a ghost. Yeah, watch this. Yeah, look what I found. <laughs> and then he forces her to look inside. That's why I'm not going to leave it enabled, but <laughs> that was interesting. I'm not really sure why or when people might use that feature. Oh boy. Alright, we need to change this out. Alright, I think they uh they found another Minotaur. Yeah. I think that with the spider they have it. As long as bones gets in there. Uh -huh. 
Did you touch the skull in the inner crypt of the Tomb of Horrors? Your soul has been instantly trapped within one of the Demi-Lich's gems, <laughs> set in its eye or its teeth, and your body totally gone. Each time the skull is touched, it'll trap a soul until all gems are occupied. After that, violators will simply be teleported randomly <laughs> within hundreds of miles from the tomb. Oh, and cursed. Like to always be hit by an opponent or never make a saving throw. Even if the curse is removed, the Violator loses two points of charisma permanently. Interestingly enough, the entire tomb was described in the runes in a mosaic on the floor at the entrance, and I'll finally quote that here now. Go back to the Tementor or through the arch. In the second great hole, you'll discover. Shun green if you can, but night's good color is for those of great valor. If shades of red stand for blood the wise, will not need sacrifice aught but a loop of magical metal. You're well along your march. Two pits along the way will be found to lead to a fortuitous fall, so check the wall. Done and done. These keys and those are most important of all. And beware of trembling hands and what will maul. If you find the false, you find the true. And into the columned hall you'll come. And there the throne that's key and keyed. The iron men of visage grim do more than meets the viewer's eye. You've left and left and found my tomb. And now your soul will die. Or Minotaur Chieftain, Radiant Impossible. Wow, kind of need to uh, prepare. I think a little bit more. <laughs> you just follow me and stay close. I think he uh, noticed us. You just follow me and stay close. Healing posture for sure one at least. All right, crew. Let's take them down. There's a storm. Raven Feebleman, hopefully. Wow, there weren't bones. All right. Recalling. <laughs> Alright, near death. Hopefully this flame arrow will do it. That's the Tomb of Horrors. The entire adventure is worth only 100,000 experience points, some additional for treasure carried out. Recommended for four to eight characters between 10th and 14th level, with a maximum roster of 20 characters, assuming additional henchmen and the like. That leaves about 5,000 experience points per player character. <laughs> That's first edition for you. Thankfully, Mutima's challenge is nothing like the Tomb of Horrors. Lily decides they should go back up to try the Yuante stairs. Another bottle of almond brandy. Cause for a little rent to scowl. Though Lily assures her it's not from the Pirate Isle Mintar. It's from the Moonshe Isles. Which is horribly different, considering Mintar is one of the islands that make up the Moonshe Isles. And it's only slightly better, if at all. One copper more per toll glass better, to be exact. Probably just the tax for High Queen Alicia Kendrick. A brawler's belt. 
as worn by monks of the Order of the Dark Moon, a evil monastic order dedicated to Shar, the goddess of darkness. Yes? Is there something you need? Yeah, I think the... Probably the reason she can't summon a creature is because one of her tactical options is to not summon creatures on her own. Yes? Is there something you need? Which is too bad. I think what they need is like a third option of... Yeah. Well, not to summon it ever, and only to summon when commanded to. <laughs> kind of need that middle option so that she'll actually memorize the spell. Alright. Of course, I could change this every time before they rest so she memorizes it, <laughs> but that's just too much trouble. I'm not going to bother with that. One of the few early tournament teams that managed to triumph in the Tomb of Horrors, by the way, did so using the Crown and Scepter against the Demi-Lich. Something Gary Gygax hadn't even conceived himself, but <laughs> admitted was a stroke of genius. And Tensor, that's the namesake for Tensor's transformation among other spells, as played by Ernie, the author's son. One of the characters he specifically had in mind to foil with the module managed to attain the ultimate, destroy a Sararak and leave laden with loot. Fair enough. And so the sequel, Return to Tomb of Horrors, was born. More campaign than a standalone module, it's an adventure of greater scope and certainly more deadly, intended for those who either survived the original and wanted more, or simply wanted a grander adventure altogether. A cloak of protection versus evil. Lily recognizes it as the same ones worn by the Border Davian militia, thanks to none other than Kelvin Blackstaff or Runson, or actually one of his apprentices. Is that what constitutes an Runson apprenticeship? Learning how to make garments like a common tailor? Ridiculous. That pretty much concludes what I wanted to talk about regarding the Tomb of Horrors. Next time, I'll actually go on to discuss the sequel, Return to the Tomb of Horrors. But in the meantime, I'll leave you with this quote from Gary Gygax in 1998. I quote, It was a long time ago when the Tomb of Horrors first made its appearance. Before I put it into manuscript form for publication, I carried the scenario around with me in my briefcase so as to be ready for those fans who boasted of having mighty PCs able to best any challenge offered by the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game. After an hour or so of time spent within the weird labyrinth of Acerorak's final resting place, the players whose characters were survivors typically remembered suddenly that they had pressing engagements elsewhere. Clutching their precious character sheets, they fled the table. Those who had already lost their vaunted PCs had previously departed, muttering darkly about impossible death traps. Had I been mean and cruel, <laughs> I would have required participants to hand over their character sheets upon the demise of a PC, torn them up, and then smiled wickedly as I asked for the name and address of their DMs so as to pass on the news of the sad loss. <sighs> but I am very kind at heart. Lily informs the Rusty Reconteur that they'll be resting for another spell before proceeding any further and afterwards determining where those stairs past the Ridley Nuanti lead. Act 2 has been nothing but Minotaurs, and not a single riddle among them. And the only contestant they discovered was the Baldur's Gate Bard. If Lily's lucky, the others were just too toothsome 
as hard as that may be to imagine, for the Minotaurs to leave anything else behind. Team Black. Undoubtedly the most competent and, of course, best-looking team there is. Should be rather sad when it's all over, actually. Should have been rather amused, if not pleased, by Little Red's added sense of showmanship and flair. It's been nothing short of adorable, really. Lily asks her little performer if, well, she's come up with a rallying cry for the team. You know, to boost morale. Maybe even titillate that noblewoman upstairs. No, but that's easy. <laughs> team Black, attack! Not quite what Lily had in mind. No matter. Lily sits at the top of the stair and again takes out her never went in wolf's hide spell book, but again is finding it hard to concentrate with both eyes on her and her eyes on the starlet. Intermission's over and it's time for Act 3. Yes? Is there something you need? Yeah, it looks like she's reverted to her melee weapon. No, all right. <laughs> I guess she just never switched back. All right. There we go. Lily's not sure what to expect now. Perhaps it'll be nothing but riddles. She should be so lucky. As they descend the stairs and, to Lily's surprise, Little Red cries out, Team Black, attack! 